So welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. And today, guys, we'll do my AFC World Cup Qualifiers review for the month of November, guys. So I'm going to do this group by group, give you guys my quick thoughts on each of the matchups, and then tell you how I feel like the group is going to pan out. And yeah, man, like I said, guys, I'll try to keep this around 30 minutes. You know, don't make this too long. And yeah, well, without further ado, man, let's go ahead and get started. So let's start with the first game, which we got here in Group A, which was North Korea 2, Iran 3. Um... Iran, Iran were amazing. Iran completely dominated the first half. I thought Mohibi, Gaidi were fantastic. And, you know, Taremi was cooking. Taremi was cooking. He got two assists. And they go, okay, it's surely over, right? You know, 3 0 up at halftime. You know, Iran may score fourth. And then the breaks might come off. And, you know, the game ends 4 0. But North Korea had other ideas. Or should I say that Iran's center back had other ideas. When Kalizadej, Kalizadej, hopefully I'm pronouncing his name right. Makes a stupid, stupid red card decision in the second half. Clear, obvious red. I think there's some, okay, how will Iran respond? Because I would think it's about this point. Okay, Iran probably will still win this, but it won't be maybe like a 3 1 or maybe like a 4 1. Then, Sarami scores an own goal there. Wrong, right place, wrong place at the wrong time. You know, it was a bit of unfortunate, you know. It is what it is. And then you think of some, okay, 3 1, North Korea, um, it's, it's fine. North Korea won't do anything. North Korea scored the second. They score the second goal from Kim. And you think thinking to myself, okay, maybe this is where North Korea is going to actually come back and, you know, get a draw in this game. And then Mehdi Tarami wins the penalty in the second half. And you think thinking to myself, okay, he's going to score this penalty, right? The 67th minute, he misses the penalty. And North Korea, uh, Iran holds on for a 3-2 win. And the second half, man, North Korea almost came close to equalizing. They had some chances. They weren't able to convert, and the game ends 3-2. So for Iran, as I said, is it the most convincing win? No, but a win is a win, and that's all that matters in the day. And let's just hope they um, learn their lesson, because if this happens again, we're going to have to have a combo. So, like I said, for Iran, massive three points for them on the road. Well, actually, it was a neutral venue, because North Korea is not playing at home, but, you know, they were the home team, North Korea, supposedly. Moving to the next game we got here is Qatar 3 Ah, I feel so bad for Uzbekistan. I feel so bad for Uzbekistan because Qatar were great in this game. Qatar were fantastic the first half. I thought first half Qatar were fantastic. Akram Habib, almost Ali combined. And you could see that without these two players, Qatar are just not that great. And we'll get to them in a bit later in this video. But yeah, Ali was fantastic. Great set piece there. The two goals of the 25th minute was a great set piece there. And the 41st minute was a great goal as well. I think it's about, okay, Qatar 2-0 up. Uzbekistan, eh, it's probably looking doom and gloom for them, especially with their strikers from Ardov off. I think it's about, okay, maybe uh, Qatar, maybe Uzbek, Qatar is going to win this, right? But Uzbekistan had other ideas. They scored two goals. Fazilov, who's, who had a big break up until this point, scored two lovely headers there to make it 2 all. I think it's about, okay, maybe Qatar is going to hold a drop points here. Then there's this red card that should have been given in the second half. I don't know why the red card wasn't given stoppage time. Stoppage time was added. 12 minutes was added on. And Lucas Mendes scores a last-minute goal to give Qatar a massive three points. They needed these three points. And, yeah, for Qatar, as I said, man, was the most convincing win. Mm, you could argue that Uzbekistan should have got a draw in this game. But at the end of the day, Qatar were better in the first half. Uzbekistan didn't really show up in the first half. And Qatar got the massive win indeed. So it is a bit controversial with 12 minutes of stoppage time being added. You know, Qatar, uh, Uzbekistan being supposedly robbed, as people would say. But at the end of the day, guys, Uzbekistan didn't show up in the first half. And Uzbekistan mentally switched off in the second half and allowed Qatar to get back in the game. So it's a crushing, it's a heartbreaking loss for Uzbekistan. But Uzbekistan, I still have, feel like having a quality finish top two in this group. And let's hope this loss doesn't affect their morale because if it does it could come back to bite them and for Qatar men massive win for them they needed this win and yeah and then UAE 3 Kyrgyzstan no UAE I thought were great in this game although I don't think Kyr although as good as UAE were and obviously they were the better team Kyrgyzstan were so abysmal Kyrgyzstan were so shocky defensively defensively they were so atrocious I, I look at the I think the first two goals if I'm mistaken were terrible mistakes there from the back you know, especially the Ulai guy he made a horrible mistake with the first goal. And yet the second goal, I believe, is an individual mistake as well. Great goals there. 
from Shalahi um, and Melanie. And then that third goal from Shalahi, that second goal from Shalahi was fantastic. I mean, it was an amazing goal there. It's just end of the game there. Lima also looked amazing as well. Two assists for him. And yeah, for UE, a much needed win after it being disappointed both September and October. And I think it's a critical win for UE to keep their World Cup hopes alive. Now we move on to match day six games where we had the reverse one. And Iran, Kyrgyzstan to Iran. I thought Iran had learned the lesson after the North Korea game. I said, okay, you know what, Iran? We played well, but we're not going to make sure it happens again. Well, it, may, it happened again because Iran almost threw away this game. Having a 2-0 lead with a fantastic start there. And you're thinking to yourself, why? how is Iran doing this again? You know, Mehdi Tarami scored in the goal there. Hardani scored. And then you're thinking to yourself, okay, Iran surely have got this this time, right? Kojo had other ideas. Kojo I thought was amazing for Kyrgyzstan. He scored that great header there, the 51st minute. And then that he scored a penalty there. Great penalty. Uh, then Osmo, man. Osmo scored the 76th minute. And Iran, man, they just made it harder for themselves than it should have been. Because this is a game they should be winning. They shouldn't be, it shouldn't be taking this close. And you have to give credit to Kyrgyzstan because Kyrgyzstan, for me, while they may not have a, enough quality in this group, and I think I'm starting to realize this, they can compete. It's going to be difficult to beat Kyrgyzstan because Kyrgyzstan, I feel, have been very unlucky um, in this game. And I feel like Kyrgyzstan did deserve to get a point in this game. But unfortunately, that's just football of the day. You know, that's just football of the day. You have to, it's, it's about outscoring your opponent. And Iran did, Kyrgyzstan did it. And yeah, Koja, man, I feel so bad for him because he did so well in this game. I thought he was amazing in this game. But Osmoon, man, had the last lap. And for Iran, as I said, man, they have to fix up the defense because Iran, historically speaking, are a very good defense. Nowadays, they look like a they don't look like a good defensive team anymore. So, shocking to see. And for Kyrgyzstan, man, keep your heads held up high. At least you guys got to win. Put up some good fights. I just hope that you guys can maybe, maybe finish in fifth place, which I think fifth place will be good for Kyrgyzstan. I think it'll be a great achievement for them. Ah, uh, next one we got UE5. Sorry. Remember I told you guys Qatar is Amos Ali Akramet FC? Yeah, that's what they are. Because my goodness me, Qatar were so atrocious this game. Defensively, they were so shocking. The amount of space they gave UE in this game was crazy. And I'm sorry, this is a two-time Asian Cup champion. I should be having higher standards than this. And remember, guys, prior to these two qualifier matches, Qatar had always been smashing UAE. And the recent fixtures, remember, Qatar destroyed UAE in the semifinals of 2019 at UAE's crib. And the fact that UAE did this is absolutely phenomenal. Shout out to Lima. Lima was amazing on the day. I mean, the guy scored four goals. Is absolute insanity. Four goals. Four lovely goals there. I thought he was amazing this day. Al Ghassani was also great. Salah, he was great too. And you know what was crazy? Even Caillou didn't start this game, which was surprising. I thought he was great and underwhelming. Um, so I guess it made sense why he didn't start. And for but Qatar, man, they were so atrocious. I'm sorry, Lucas Mendes. He's a garbage center back. Oh my jeez. Sure, may have scored the winner for them in the last game. By my goodness me, defensively, he is so abysmal. He gave away a stupid penalty there for the third, a second goal there. And then I think it was the center mid there, Al Hassan, horrible mistake. I think it was for the third goal, if I'm not mistaken. Barsham gives away a penalty. And yeah, Qatar just looks hopeless, man. And Qatar looks really hopeless. And without Afif and Ali, this team is finished. This team is finished, guys. This team, without Akram Afif and Amos Ali, is nothing. They they offer nothing else in attack. And I'm sorry, as a two-time Asian Cup champion, Surely, I expect more quality players up front. And I know Afif and Ali are amazing. Obviously, they're great players. I'm not saying they aren't. But to the point where if these two players aren't balling out, you're finished? I mean, it's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous from Qatar. Absolute clown show from Qatar. And UE, man, six points this window is very impressive. And now UE have put themselves maybe in a position where they could qualify for the World Cup, guys. They're only three points behind Uzbekistan. And Uzbekistan, which we'll speak about them in a bit, I have not been that convincing. So moving on to the final game we got here of Group A. Uh, we got here North Korea nil Uzbekistan one. Uzbekistan, man. Like I said with Iran, this team makes it harder for themselves than it should be. Because Uzbekistan had a great lead there, Fazilov there. And then for some odd reason, Uzbekistan just collapsed the second half. But North Korea almost got the point in this game. They got a penalty there, which was definitely a penalty. 
maybe the red car was a bit harsh. I think that red was a bit harsh, but you know, it is what it is. And then obviously North Korea missed a penalty. North Korea have pen bottlers. They have, this is now the third pen they missed. Because I believe they missed against Uzbekistan reverse fixture. And I believe they missed against UAE. And now they missed against North, uh, um, Uzbekistan again. Like, you got to change the pen taker. And then they had a great chance to equalize right at the end. But it wasn't to be. And Uzbekistan holds on for a massive 1-0 win. But my goodness me, Uzbekistan have to improve. Because I'm sorry, this is, a, this is really shocking. Like, I understand your, like I said earlier, at the end of the day, it's about qualifying the day. You just want to get the three points. But this is just so shocking. Like, to barely just squeeze a win against North Korea is quite shocking in itself. So, Uzbekistan, man, I'm just not convinced. But a win is a win, as they say. And looking at the group stands right here, Iran, Iran and Uzbekistan are looking like heads and shoulders. Iran is definitely going to qualify. I'm pretty confident of that. Uzbekistan should get that second place, although Uzbekistan do have to play UE away, which is going to be interesting. If UE can win that game, that could be massive uh, because UE actually have a superior goal difference than Uzbekistan. It's actually interesting. Qatar, I think for me, Qatar, their best case is playoffs. I don't think they can make more in the playoffs. Um, Kyrgyzstan's on three points and North Korea's on two points. Honestly, I'm looking at this group. I think the group is going to finish probably in this order. I, I don't really see any changes happening. Um, maybe the only thing I can maybe see potentially happening is maybe uh, Qatar go above UE, but I feel like these teams are they're ranked and they're according to their specific, um, their, their how good they are. So I, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this group unravels, but I think the group will finish as it is. Moving to this one, man. Oman won Palestine nil. Oman, man. Fantastic. Fantastic win for them. Great goal there. Um, and the, I believe it was the 80th minute of the game. Fantastic for them. But my goodness me for Oman, they need some more players up front because I feel like they're really reliant on um, this just Oman's attack is just not that great. Uh, you know, the goal scorer, uh, Al Ghassani, scored a great goal there in Palestine, man. I just need to see more from their attack because I'm sorry. Zabak has to step up. Zabak's been so mid this qualifier, the third round so far. And I really had high expectations for him, especially how good he was the second round. But the third round, he's just been ghosted. And Palestine, they just don't have enough good. They just, their attack is just toothless. Their attack is toothless. And so Oman, pretty cool win for them. And a hopes for a playoff spot. Moving to the next one, game we got here. It is Iraq nil, Jordan nil. This was a snooze fest. I'm sorry. Jordan, I thought were the much better team. I thought defensively they were great. They, they man Mark Ahmed Hussein out of the game. Ahmed Hussein was nowhere to be seen. And I thought... Jordan, for me, they were great. I think the only thing that let Jordan down was their attack. Of the day because Al-Nami, Al-Tarami, al, al, al Swan, they didn't turn up. And it almost felt like every time Jordan went in the attack, I think it was al Nami that had to do a lot of hero ball. And what is hero ball, essentially? It's basically when you go, when you do everything on your own and you don't rely on everything else. And it was a lot of hero ball for me for Jordan, and I just thought it wasn't effective. And for Iraq, I, I just felt like they only really showed up, in my opinion, for Iraq their attackers in particular, when the subs were made. Because when the subs were made, Iraq almost won the game. Iraq almost won the game. But I'm, I'm looking at Jesus Casas in particular there. Why are you making subs so late in the game? A game of which you have not been that great in. And remember, Iraq only got two shots on target. Like, how did Bayish play the full game is mind-boggling to me. And why is um is Zidane Iqbal not playing? Why is um not he's not playing? You know, like, why is these players not playing? And I just think that for me... For Jesus Casas, he made the subs way too late in like the 70th minute of the game. I mean, I, I just don't understand. I feel like he should have started those players and made, made, made the subs a bit earlier. And maybe if it was made earlier, Iraq could have won the game because they had some close chance at the end. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just think that for me, they were um, underwhelming. Al Amari, I thought was fantastic. Um, Ahmed Hussein was very underwhelming. And for Iraq, as a set man, are they Ahmed Hussein FC? Because it really does feel like for me, they really need Ahmed Hussein to deliver for them for the goals. Because without Ahmed Hussein, this attack just doesn't look as electric. But defensively, they look good as well. You have to give them credit. And for Iraq, as I said, I think for Jordan, they'll be the more happier of the two teams considering they had to play on the road. Um, but for Iraq, as I said, man, why couldn't it, why why did they start so why why didn't they look that great throughout the game? It's just underwhelming to me. But a draw is a draw, nil nil draw. Yeah. Moving to the next game we got here, it is um, Kuwait 1, Iraq, I'm sorry, South Korea 3. I thought South Korea fantastic this game. South Korea absolutely did just demolish Kuwait. Kuwait literally did not do much in this game. 
Um, the only thing Kuwait had was that great goal there from Daham, but uh, besides that, Kuwait didn't really offer anything else. South Korea just thought were amazing. Wong Biom, that midfielder from Feyenoord, I thought was fantastic. Got two assists. Son was obviously great. All was great as well. And yeah, South Korea just looked amazing. You know, they had the young attackers, Bola, Bai as well. And I just think South Korea is just too talented, too amazing. And so, shout out to Son, man, for scoring his 50th goal for his national team. And it's an incredible achievement for him. And for South Korea, man, they're in full control. They're going to qualify for the World Cup. And as for Kuwait, uh, they just don't have enough quality. They just don't have enough quality to compete. Moving to the next one now. we got South Korea, Palestine 1, South Korea 1. Now, this is a bit of a shock result. I did not see this coming. Um, although, to be fair, I did say Palestine did hold South Korea to a one nil nil draw the first time they met. So, maybe Palestine and South Korea's broken team, as people would say. Because Palestine, for me, in this game, were fantastic. I thought Palestine, um, they scored that great goal there. Great, great goal there from Quinn Barr. Uh, bad mistake there from Kim and Jay. Kim and Jay giving away the ball there. And I thought it was a great way to open the account for Palestine. And I think Palestine were fantastic. You know, they played defensively well. I thought Hamadou was fantastic, making those key saves. And the Son scoring that crucial equalizer there. And yeah, I just think for South Korea, man, I just think it was a bad day in the office. They just weren't clinical in the final third, I think. They just messed up, and I think for South Korea, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a, un, a, a frustrating result. But I think at the end of the day, South Korea should be fine. I think they're going to be fine. They're going to qualify for the World Cup, so I wouldn't be too worried for them. And I think for Palestine, it's a great result for them. They they got a draw against South Korea. Two draws against South Korea is amazing. But for Palestine, man, are you going to get those wins? Because that's what's going to really matter. And you know what the crazy thing is, guys? Palestine still sacked their coach even after getting a draw in this game. You know how messed up that is? You know how sad that is? Okay, I understand that, you know, the results haven't been going great, but you just got a draw against South Korea. One of the best teams in Asia. To sack him? I mean, I, I think it's a bit harsh. If you're going to sack him, you should have sacked him after the Oman game. But you know, it is what it is. Maybe Palestine will improve now, but they got to start getting wins. And Dabog is a sad man. He still, needs to, he still needs to fire goals. I'm still not impressed with his overall play. And, yeah, I just think for... Um, Palestine, man, it's a good result for them, but man, they need to start picking up wins. That's all I'm saying. Moving to the next one we got here, it is um, Oman nil, Iraq won. Iraq got a critical win on the uh, road against Oman. Was it a pretty win? Not necessarily. I, I think I, I Oman had their chances, um, but Iraq, man, they proved my allegations wrong. Because remember I said earlier in the video that Iraq might be Ahmed Hussein FC? Well, they aren't. They scored a goal without Ahmed Hussein. And it was a great goal there from Yusuf Amin. Fantastic goal there. A uh, great, great link up play there. And I wish he started the last game. He should have started the last game. But yeah, it was good to see that he made some changes. Bayush didn't play this game. Iqbal played. Yassin played. And you could see that Iraq went with a completely different shape. They went with a 4 2 3 1 in this game. Where I think in the last game, I think they went with a 4 1 4 1. So they went with a completely different formation. You can tell that Hazus Kazas knows how to get the best out of this team, make the changes that are needed. Um, but my issue with Iraq is just I need to see more in that attack. I need to see more in that attack because I know this team has quality in that attack. But we saw the Asian Cup and how quality they are. Defensively, though, they've been fantastic. You have to give them that credit. Like, defensively, they've been spot on. I think there's only been two games in which they conceded goals, which I think was the um, South Korea game on the road. And there was another game that kind of, I'm forgetting right now at the top of my head. I think it might have been the Kuwait game. Or maybe it was a Palestine game. I'll have to double check. But the point I'm trying to make here is that Iraq defense will be fantastic. And they actually have the best defense in this group. It's not even South Korea. It's not even Jordan. It's Iraq. So fantastic result for them on the road. And it's a massive win for them. And for Iraq, as I said, man, I just need to see more in the final third if they want me to, if they, if, if I want to take them as a chance to make the World Cup. Because, you know, they haven't made the World Cup. Moving to the next one, I got here. It's Kuwait 1, Jordan 1. Jordan, man. This team, man, this team just lets you down. Because this is a team that's very hot and cold. This team could, like, do so well, and then this team could let you down. Because, you know, it was amazing. Like, you got to draw away against Iraq as a away team. You should, that, that's a great result. But now to follow up with this to Kuwait, and with all due respect, this is Kuwait, guys. Kuwait is not even that great. They're one of the lowest ranked teams, I believe, in the third round. The fact that Jordan did this is quite shocking. Because Al-Namid, man, what a goal that was. 21st, man. That was a 
beautiful goal there, only for it to be scrapped away by Daham, who scored a banger of a goal, by the way. And yeah, I mean, it was a game where it was a close game. It could have gone either way. And I think for the backup goalkeeper for Jordan, he probably should have saved that goal there. But yeah, I mean, Jordan can also count themselves lucky. As much as they had chances to win this game, they had a late chance there, I believe, in the 89th minute. Kuwait almost won the game right at the end. Almost won the game right there at the end. Um, it was just a miss. I think it was a missed shot there. And yeah, I think a draw is probably a fair result. Both teams created well. And Jordan were fantastic that first half. But the second half, man, they weren't as good. And Kuwait came alive. And I think this is almost like a carbon copy of the first game when they played. And the, the, Remember the first time Jordan played against Kuwait? Jordan were so good in that game, and the Kuwait just scored a last-minute goal. It almost feels like the same kind of game, where Jordan are just not clinical enough in the final third. And that's the worrying thing for them, is that it's a team that is like, they're just, they just don't have the same intensity in the, 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 throughout the game. Because you could argue that Jordan and Kuwait almost won this game. And had Kuwait won, ooh, Jordan been in a really bad position. But thankfully for Jordan, they got the draw. But man, they're going to have to improve at these kind of games, these kind of close, decisive games. Because Kuwait, man, they could be a bit frustrated. They only got a point in this game. So looking at the table right here, guys, South Korea is top of the table as expected with 14 points undefeated. Iraq is second. Jordan is third. Oman is fourth. Fifth is Kuwait and sixth is Palestine. I feel like I feel like looking at this table right here, guys, I think Kuwait and Palestine, I, I think it's fair to say they're not going to get the playoffs. Um, I just think that for me, they just don't have enough quality um, to get it. Well, Palestine have quality. It's just they haven't been scoring enough goals, and they haven't won any games. So I, I just don't see it. And for Kuwait, I just don't think they have enough quality. And I think Oman, I just feel like they're just the most balanced. They can score the goals. They have enough quality as well. Although I don't really like their attack in particular. Their attack can be a bit improved. So. That fourth place spot is very tricky to call, but I'm going to give the edge to Oman for now. And then for that top three, man, I think Iraq is looking maybe nailed off for second place because of how good they are defensively. Although Jordan still has to play Iraq at home. And I think that game in June, I believe it's in June, that could be a crucial game to decide in the second place. And then South Korea, obviously top. They're going to top the group as we expect. And I think the question is, who's going to get that spot? So it, it's, it's very close, guys. This group, I don't think it's anything as 100%, but... I think what is very evidently clear is South Korea will top, and I think it's a matter of who's going to get that second place. Because right now, I'm giving the edge to Iraq just because of how good they are defensively. But Jordan can definitely do it. Because I think Jordan, for me, see, I think this is the, the, the difference, guys. I think Iraq have a better defense, and I think Jordan have a better offense. And I think that's the difference. And I feel like for Oman and Palestine and Kuwait, I just think Oman is just the best of balance, where they're good defensively, they're great attacking-wise, and they have enough quality. So I think it's the best of the bunch. But like I said, this group is very close to call. Anything can still happen. And we'll see what March brings. Moving to the final group we got here, Group C. We got here is Australia. Nail, Saudi Arabia, nail. Australia should have won this game. With the amount of chances they had, I don't know how Australia didn't win this game. Saudi Arabia, in my opinion, were quite poor um, in this game. Uh, but they did get a goal disallowed right at the end. And for Australia, as I said, man, they just need a clinical higher front. I'm sorry. Australia just they there's because I'm sorry when you go from Tim Kale to Mitchell Duke, there's a serious downgrade. There is a serious downgrade, and yeah, Australia just shocking. And for Saudi Arabia, man, they should be happy with this result because I thought they I thought Australia played better, and but yeah, like I said, just both teams just didn't really offer that much in the day. And I think a nil nil draw is probably a fair result. What was the next game we got here? It is China, China. A Bahrain nil China. Man, China. They got the win on the road. In crazy circumstances. Because Bahrain thought they'd won this game. The 87th minute. Okay, you're thinking, so, okay, Bahrain's going to get a 1 0 win at home. Keeps their World Cup hopes alive. Nope. Then a few minutes later, Zhang scores the 91st minute. And this is a guy that's been criticized a lot. This is basically, this guy misses a lot of sitters. And the fact he scored the winning goal was crazy. Bahrain goes down in for 10 men. For stupid stop, uh, for stupid, yeah, uh, for basically a clumsy challenge there, and yeah, Bahrain, man, I'm just really disappointed with Bahrain in particular because this is a team that's at home, and the fact that they had only one shot on target in this game is mind-boggling to me. 71% possession, six shots. China with seven shots, three on target, 
The fact that China did this with a Wu Li is also commendable. And the fact that they did this on the road as well is commendable. You have to give China a lot of credit there. You have to give the manager a ton of credit there. What he's instilled with this China team, because what he's shown with this China team, Franco Ivanovic, is that this China team, while they may not have enough quality, they're going to be difficult to break up. Defensively, I thought they were fantastic. And you have to give a lot of credit for that. And for China's a said, man, who shall win for them on the road? And yeah, it's good to see for China, man, making this group very interesting. And as for Bahrain, very disappointing for them. And yeah, it's just, just, un just uh, underwhelming, man. underwhelming. Uh, then Indonesia and Nail Japan. Japan, man. Oh, they're so good. Japan just owns eight. It, Japan is the best team in Asia. And don't argue with me in the comments, guys. Japan is the best team in Asia. That being said, though, Indonesia honestly didn't play that well. Because Indonesia, I would say, for the first 20 to 30 minutes, I say they were better than Japan. In particular, I think the Japanese center back said Itakura. He was having a disaster class. Disaster class. He almost cost his team. It's just that Indonesia couldn't convert their chances. Once Japan got the first goal, you just knew it was over. You just knew it was over. Because once Japan got the first goal, you just knew it was over. Bad own goal there from Hubner. Minamura scoring the goal there in the 40th minute. And then I think Marita uh, scored the goal there in the 49th. And Sakasugura in the 69th minute. Like, Japan were just fantastic. On the second half in particular and i just think indonesia just collapsed i just think indonesia just lost hope they had they tried their best to maybe get a consolation but it just wasn't to be and i think indonesia just fell apart man that um i think it was the eight guys i think he made a horrible mistake i think it was the second one i'm mistaken and yeah, indonesia man i just felt bad for them because i actually thought the first half they were great they just couldn't cover their chances and the second half though the japan just took over in japan cruise control and they are the best team in this group by far. Uh, then moving back to Japan, uh, China won, Japan three. Now, Japan played well in this game, but this was kind of uncharacteristic for Japan because the goals they scored were all headers. Japan normally don't score header goals. Japan normally don't. And the fact that they did in this game was fantastic. Ogawa with the brace there. Um, um, Ichikora also with the goal there. Japan were just great with the set pieces. As for China, they were great, I'd say, defensively. And I think they had a good counterattack. It's just that they don't have enough quality to compete with Japan. And, you know, it was a great goal there from Lee on the uh, the, um, the second half. Respond, you know, after Japan went soon a lot. But you just knew that Japan was going to win this game. Always, like, Japan is a superior team to China. China, nothing to be ashamed of. And I think this is a great winner for China. Three points of this window against Bahrain on the road is critical. And it's keep themselves in a great position because now they're literally tied with everyone else in this group with six points besides Australia and China. I'm sorry, in Japan. So that's a fantastic win for them. Even though they are still bought in the group, I think China can still be very proud of what they had. So all of my Chinese fans, you should be celebrating this. Moving to the next game we got here, it is um, Indonesia 2. Guys, we have to have a we have to have a discussion, guys. Which national team is more finished, Qatar or Saudi? Because I'm very I'm I'm very torn here, guys. Because I one had the obvious because I'm actually going to probably say Saudi. Saudi is worse because at least with Qatar, they can at least offer you goals, and they at least beat Uzbekistan. Saudi Arabia didn't. Know. You know Saudi Arabia haven't scored a goal for some time. You know the last time Saudi Arabia scored a goal was actually against China. That 2-1 win. And remember, if you guys remember that game, it was all the set-piece goals. Saudi Arabia, this national team is finished. And Harvey Renard, he has a tall task in his hand. He has to somehow get this team to qualify for the World Cup. And this Saudi team looks awful. Awful. And I'm sorry, when your best player is your center back, that's a lot of issues. A lot of issues for your team. Take nothing away from Indonesia. Indonesia were fantastic. They completely exposed the high line that Harvey Renard was doing. And they played fantastic. Marcelino with the headline scored the two goals there. Fantastic goals there indeed. For uh, Marcelino Ferdinand. He's a bright youngster. And he has to make he has to make a move to the big European piece. He has to make a move. He has to because he is just that good. At 20 years old, fantastic. I thought Ferdinand was also fantastic as well. Martin Pais, I thought was also great as well. He made some big saves, especially towards the end. 
And yeah, I mean, Hubner as well. I mean, basically the only blemish for Indonesia is the Hubner made it just got a bit too reckless there at the end, you know, got a red card. But, you know, for Indonesia, I think they're fine. They'll probably be able to find someone to replace him. And I think Indonesia were just fantastic. They honestly got the win that they deserve. Because it's almost like the Japan game where, okay, they they created so well, they started the game so well, but can they convert those chances? But they convert their chances this time. Unlike against Japan. And for Indonesia, man, fantastic win for them. Probably their biggest win in their history. The first win ever in the World Cup qualifiers. And it's great to see this national team do it. I would love to see Indonesia at the World Cup at 2026. And it'll be a fantastic achievement for them. And you have to give a lot of credit. And as for Harvey Renard, Saudi Arabia, they better finish top four. Because if they don't finish top four, we're going to have to have an emergency stream. And that will be one of the biggest disgraces for Saudi Arabia. Because remember, guys, Saudi Arabia were the big powerhouse in Asia. They're one of the biggest national teams in Asia. You can't get a top four. Nah, I mean, that that's peak, man. That's peak. Uh, then finally, the final game we got here, it is um, Australia, Bahrain 2, Australia 2. Australia, man, they had the perfect start. Great goal there from Yengi. The first man of the game. Horrible mistake there uh, from the Bahrain defense. Um, it was a horrible mistake there. If, you know, Bar Australia capitalized upon it, and it's 1-0. It's 1-0. And you think of yourself, okay, Bahrain is going to lose this game at home. You know, Australia looking good that first half. Bahrain were nowhere to be seen. But the second half comes around, uh, Bahrain makes You have to give credit to the manager, Drezovic. That's right, not Drezovic. Tell us. Uh, Dragon tells us. Tell us. Hope I pronounced his name right. Makes a brilliant change at the 66th minute. Hassan catches Matthew Ryan off his line. And by the way, what was Matthew Ryan doing there? Hassan scored a great goal there. And the Ursula case, 1 1. How will it go from here? Then Hassan scored again. Horrible mistake there. I think it was from Australia. I think it was from Burgas that made the horrible mistake there. That terrible header back, a terrible header miscue there. And, you know, it's 2 1. And you think it's so, okay. Bahrain is actually the, the, the double overall story. Because remember, Bahrain defeated Australia the last time they played. And Australia got the equalizer there. Yankee there again at the last minute. And yeah, Australia, a Bahrain man just couldn't clear the lines. And um, Australia got the, this crucial point on the road from the set piece. And it ends 2 2. So Australia, man, just stupid laps of defense of the concentration. Because let's be real, Australia should have won this game. They only draw points in this game because of how naive, how stupid mistakes they made. But for Australia, as I said, man, they have to limit those mistakes. And for Bahrain, man, credit to them for making the best out of the situation. Because in a game in which they were completely outclassed, they managed to sneak a point in this game. Fantastic point for them. And looking at the group right here, guys, the only thing I'm certain with is Japan will finish first. That's the only thing that's every, that I'm confident with. The rest, though, I have no idea. Because Australia, Indonesia, Saudi, Bahrain, China. Guys, this group is only separated by seven and six points. You know how mad that is? Every nation in this group has won a game. There's This is the only group in the qualifiers that every nation's won a game. It's mind-boggling to me on how close this group is. Now, let's be real. That second place is going to really be between us. It's going to be between Australia and Saudi. I don't think Indonesia is going to get second place. I don't think they're in contention. And right now, I'm going to lean with Australia, but maybe Saudi can do it. And for Saudi Arabia, man, they better finish the top four. They better finish the top four. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens. So, let me know what you guys think of my AFC review, guys. Hope you guys enjoy this one. It came out to be around 33 minutes, so I did roughly around. I suspect it went a little bit more. But that's okay, I suppose. So, hope you guys enjoy. Please run a like and subscribe as well. And run a comment down below your thoughts on the games. And, yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy.